Welcome to this presentation about the IATA FIATA Air Cargo Program, the IFACP. This webinar presentation will cover the following topics. First, the background, then an overview of the new IATA FIATA Air Cargo Program, and finally, the IFACP Implementation Plan, specifically for Canada. So what is the background that led to the development and now the launch of the IFACP? It is the changed role of the freight forwarder, an evolution over recent decades from being agents who were selling products and services on behalf of the airlines to forwarders who are more customers of the airlines. While the previous role and relationship operated within the framework of the IATA Cargo Agency Programme, the rules and procedures governing primarily the promotion and sale of international air transportation on behalf of the carriers, this is no longer appropriate in today's environment. It was time for modernization. Both IATA and FIATA recognize the need to review, redefine and re-engineer the current agency program and to work together to develop a new program that would better reflect the changed airline forward relationship. After several years of collaboration, the IATA-FIATA Air Cargo Program the IFACP is the result. Both organisations have agreed to support the IFACP and have signed an official cooperation agreement. The new programme will be jointly managed by both forwarders, FIATA, and airlines, IATA. A new joint governance board will be the decision-making authority to establish the IFACP and its rules. Now an overview of the IFACP. The vision of the IFACP is to be a modern forwarder endorsement program that will operate globally and meet the needs of today's air cargo community. It should ensure mutual benefits for airlines and forwarders. All parties agreed it should be business as usual. The transition from the existing IATA cargo agency program to the new IFACP program should not adversely impact current day-to-day -day business relationships or interrupt the flow of cargo between shippers, forwarders and carriers. Current IATA accredited agents will be provided with a new IFACP forwarder agreement, which once signed will allow them to automatically transfer to the new program and to continue their operations and current CAS participation as is, without any further assessment. Their endorsed status and codes will continue to be valid. The format of the Airway Bill will not change upon launch of the IFACP. The forwarder is the contracting party and will be the shipper for the carrier's conditions of carriage, irrespective if another party is identified as shipper in the carrier's Airway Bill or on shipment records or electronic Airway Bills. So what are the benefits of the IFACP? It recognises that majority of cargo tendered to airlines is on a principal-to-principal -principal basis. The forwarder is no longer acting as an agent, but is a customer of the carrier. The IFACP has a simplified and streamlined governance structure to reduce the administrative requirements to manage a global programme. The new joint management structure is better suited to meet the industry's expectations and customer obligations going forward. IATA and FIATA cooperation will ensure the programme's relevance and that appropriate endorsement criteria and qualifications are applied for membership to the IFACP. The cooperation and collaboration between IATA and FIATA has a greater potential to achieve common industry goals, including e-cargo priorities. The differences between the current and the modernised programme are shown in this table. The left column shows the current status, the right the changes or differences that are represented via the IFACP. The current status shows that there are eight IATA cargo agency programs that operate under varying IATA cargo resolutions, such as 803, 805, 807, 809, etc. These will be replaced by a single global program, that is the IFACP operated as under a single set of standard rules. The IATA Cargo Agency Conferences, an airline 
only forum will be replaced by the IATA FIATA Governance Board, a joint and balanced airline forwarder board that will set the IATA FIATA air cargo programme rules and procedures. Conference adopted IATA resolutions, whereas in the IFACP, rules governing the programme and endorsement criteria for membership, such as operational and financial criteria, will be set by the IFGB. Currently, there are approximately 80 diverse local and regional airline or joint bodies that provide input in respect of the current agency programmes. These will be replaced by a reduced number of joint councils for the IFACP. Currently, 10 such joint councils will be established. CAS remains unchanged. The CAS settlement procedures are separate from the IFACP and will remain under the governance of IATA and the conference. However, the CAS participation rules have been consolidated, Resolution 801R and 801RE, and updated to better reflect current procedures and practices. The transfer to the IFACP will not affect participation conditions, either for airlines or forwarders. There has been some conflict and ambiguity in respect of some of the current rules and terms. It is hoped that the IFACP has improved and better defined the roles and responsibilities of forwarders. In future, any such issues will be resolved via the jointly managed programme and via the IFGB. IATA agent-based accreditation standards are being replaced by customer-based endorsement standards, which have been established following joint consultations. The following slides summarise the key highlights of the IFACP and the changes it represents. To recap, the various current IATA cargo agency and intermediary programmes will be replaced worldwide by the new single standardised IFACP. Global management will be via the Joint Governance Board, the IFGB. Adoption of programme rules, including operational and financial criteria for endorsement, will be via the IFGB, so jointly by airlines and forwarders. Such criteria will be based on recommendations emanating from the new regional joint councils, which will provide consultations and feedback and proposals in respect of specific local criteria or standards. The streamlined governance via the new joint councils will replace the multitude of current local assemblies, councils and ICAPs existing under today's conference structure. The current criteria, including established local financial criteria, will be transferred and applied upon implementation of the IFACP, ensuring the as-is and non-interruption of current operations. The newly constituted joint councils will subsequently be able to propose any changes to current local criteria, including financial standards, to the IFGB. The new joint councils being responsible for the endorsement and retention criteria specific to their respective country or countries. It has been agreed via the cooperation agreement that all local financial criteria will be subject, however, to a review by an independent legal council to ensure its compliance with competition law prior to transfer to the IFACP. The CAS rules and procedures and current charges continue as is. In future, CAS operations remain separate from the IFACP since CAS remains under the jurisdiction of the Cargo Agency Conference and the management of our IATA. Other applicable fees and administrative charges, such as annual fees, etc., will remain unchanged upon implementation of the IFACP. In future, the fee structure and fee levels will be decided by the IFGB. Ready for carriage conditions and provisions in respect of operational criteria such as DGR training requirements and best practices in respect of cargo standards will remain unchanged. The new IFACP handbook is being issued and will contain all of the programme rules. The handbook will provide links to various cargo industry standards helping to raise airline and forwarder awareness of industry requirements and responsibilities. This slide shows the flowchart of how a forwarder can transfer to the new programme. The top line 
shows a new application which, as today, will require the submission of an application to IATA and passing of an assessment in respect of financial and operational criteria before being accepted and endorsed in the IFACP. For existing IATA accredited agents, the simplified process will allow an automatic transfer upon signature of a new IFACP forwarder agreement without additional formalities or assessment. Previous slides have mentioned the streamline governance and new regional joint councils. This slide provides details of the new IFACP joint council, one of which will be established in respect of Canada. The council, the council consists of a balanced membership of between four and six airlines and forwarders. Airline representatives are appointed by IATA, the Cargo Agency Conference, and forwarder representatives via FIATA, drawing from the National Cargo Forwarder Associations. The Joint Council makes proposals or recommendations based on a majority decision. Meetings shall be convened as necessary, face-to-face -face or via conference call if more practical. To ensure active participation of the members, any delegate who fails to attend two consecutive meetings will be removed and a replacement member, airline or forwarder nominated. Both IATA, the Global Head of Cargo, and FIATA, the Chairman of AFI, or their appointed local representatives are non-voting members of joint councils. And the IATA FIATA Programme Secretariat, currently IATA, will act as secretary for the council meetings, convening the meeting, preparing the agenda, writing the minutes, etc. The joint councils also have the authority to set up any temporary working groups as appropriate, for example, composed of financial experts if local financial criteria are being discussed. The Implementation Plan This table shows steps and the planned timetable of the implementation plan specifically for Canada. The key milestones are listed together with the tentative timetable. The first step is the initial joint communication letter that will be sent to all current participants in the IATA Cargo Agency Programme, providing an introduction to the new IFACP and dates for the information session via webinar. For Canada, this is the 15th of August. The National Forwarder Association, CIFA, will issue a local press release that IATA will also then tweak and circulate to its press co contacts in that market. A number of dates will be fixed for the IFACP information broadcasts by a webinar coordinated with the local IATA office and CIFA. IATA agents, may, as well as any current CAS associates, may subscribe to participate. Around the same dates, an information session, also via webinar, will be organised for local airlines. Following these sessions, IATA will then proceed to send a second communication to current agents, inviting them to transfer to the new programme and sending their new IATA FIATA Air Cargo Programme forwarder agreement with instructions for signature and return. A deadline date for return of the new agreements will be set at approximately six weeks and follow-ups will be sent to ensure a maximum number of current agents sign to join the new programme. The IFACP will be declared effective when a majority of the market has signed up. This will be confirmed by a joint communication letter from the IFACP Secretariat. Immediately following such announcement, the market will cut over to the IFACP. To summarise the key points of the table and what is involved during the implementation of the from the prospective parties' point of view, from IATA's point of view, IATA will coordinate various national communication campaigns which will take place to introduce the new programme jointly and in conjunction with the local forwarders association. New agreements in respect of the IFACP will be spent, sent to all current IATA cargo agents for them to transfer to the new programme simply by signing up via the new agreement. IATA airlines have adopted various transfer and tie-in resolutions, including a new general concurrence, which means they will automatically participate in the IFACP when it is introduced and implemented in the country and continue to accept freight tendered by IFACP forwarders. 
a small number of non-IATA carriers participating in CAS will be required to sign a new general concurrence to ensure they also agree to the transfer to the IFACP. IATA will control the return of the new IFACP contracts and follow up with individual forwarders failing to sign up. As indicated, no financial or other assessment will be necessary for current agents when transferring and signing up for the new programme. What else is involved in the implementation from FIATA's perspective? Well, FIATA will invite its local freight forwarder association, CIFA for Canada, to actively participate in the joint communications, any briefing sessions and local coordination in respect of the IFACP rollout. FIATA and its local member association su support the IFACP and therefore will inform their local forwarder members and advise about the IFCP and its implementation. Local forwarder association CIFA is working closely with the IATA local office to ensure the success of any roadshow or webinar sessions. For the airlines, similar communications and information sessions will take place in the local market. IATA will explain the new program rules and implementation timeline, as well as the deadline to transfer from the current agency program to the IFACP. If an airline wishes to participate in the local joint council, it should submit a nomination to IATA. Airlines will be informed of the new general concurrence, as well as the opt-out procedures should they impose their own additional requirements, such as bilateral bank guarantees in respect of any forwarders in the local market. For non-IATA airlines that participate in CAS, their headquarters will be required to sign specifically for the IFACP, since they are not party to the IATA Cargo Agency Conference decisions. For current IATA Cargo Agents, they will be invited to attend an information session at various dates via webinars to explain the new program rules. Such sessions will indicate the implementation timelines and when the market should switch to the IFACP and when the current agency program rules will no longer apply. If a forwarder wishes to participate on the local joint council, they should submit a nomination to FIATA or to the local association CIFA. Most importantly, current agents should sign their new individual IFACP agreement and return this before the deadline. The market will be notified when the IFACP implementation and the new program is declared effective. More information can be obtained via the respective IATA and FIATA websites shown on the slide, which will also have a number of frequently asked questions and links for any other customer service support in respect of the IFACP. Thank you for your attention and participation in this IFACP information session.